My name is uh, Evgenia Stoichkova. Uh, I'm Bulgarian um, and uh, I'm a um, uh, franchise operations director for the Coca-Cola company for Romania, Bulgaria, Moldova and Albania. Um, it was a long journey when uh, I was until getting here. Um, interesting one, I must say. Um, actually, uh, my education in the past was uh, during the communist time and I'm an engineer. I'm an engineer in geology. <laughs> very different from what I'm doing uh, right now. And um, I, the first difficult decision I needed to take in my life was after all the system collapsed. And I saw that um, with my education, uh, the prospects for the future are not very clear. Um, all of the system dismantled. And um, I had the opportunity uh, to go for a, a sort of competition for uh, studying abroad. Um, uh, uh, training a scholarship from the French government at that time. I spoke very little French, but I decided to risk it. Uh, I went to this um, competition and uh, somehow I qualified to my big surprise, I must say, at that time, because I thought that the French is important, but it was not so important at the end of the day. And I went to study in France for a year uh, in economy. Uh, and I completely sort of um, uh, disregarded my six years investment in the education, I requalified, and uh, from there I entered the marketing area uh, with a little education, but with a lot of willingness to change things in my life and to go for where the world was going. One big learning was at that time that um, I really saw this opportunity and I took it, I took this risk and uh, this paid off pretty well. Um, then I entered in Danone uh, because Danone was partner of that program and I ended up in Danone, Bulgaria with the opening of the company, um, doing the marketing uh, there. And then I made a career in Danone throughout the marketing, uh, starting from the trainee uh, up to a marketing uh, manager. Uh, also, I took some other opportunities in this career. I went to, for three years to work in Russia abroad, I came back, etc. So one one learning I had throughout this um, up to then was that you need to be open for opportunities, take the risk and go for it. Sometimes with not very clear outcome of what this is going to give you really. I didn't know what is going to be even the education in France. After that in Danone, I didn't know what exactly is going to be the outcome after Russia, with Russia, what is Russia and so on. But at the end of the day, it always turned out as a new experience, new learning, which is which is paying back. Then I reached uh, uh, a point I had been um, invited for an interview in Coke. I'm a Coke fan, a big Coke fan from a very young age. And I, I realized that if I change Danone, it will be for a company that I really love, which was Coke at that time. So I went for the interview. I passed seven interviews <laughs> to enter Hawk, <laughs> and um, then I uh, I needed to take this decision. I, I felt really attached to the on one side, and I really saw the new opportunity in Hawk. It was very difficult to take this decision, but again, I made this risk. I changed. I came to Hawk, and I started gradually. I I joined Hawk as a market manager for Bulgaria. And then gradually I started to progress and I ended up where I am right now, um, being responsible for four countries uh, mm -hmm. within the Coke system. And um, all of this is by being open to, to opportunities, to new things, to not, not thinking too much. Mm -hmm. A lot of times I, I had this decision through my intuition, God's feeling as well. It was a smooth ride? Or you had bumps on the way? Well, bumps uh, depends on the... Of course, it's not... Uh, uh, I, I didn't, uh, you know, had a very difficult career moment, so to say. But uh, in all this, uh, it is an evolution. For me, it was a smooth evolution, let's put it that way. I was more taking um, decisions, uh, risk to change things, to go in a new area. I went from marketing to this new area, for example, which is uh, franchise operations, which is much more within a Coke 
area, meaning that you are really responsible to work together with the bottler in order to make the business happen in the country, rather than really focusing on the marketing programs. So initially I really wanted to go for a pure marketing career, then I changed. Um, so it, it was an evolution. Every time you learn something new, you start to think about something new. Uh, even for a year, I was working in a customer type of uh, project. So um, I'm very open to, to new things and that, I guess, was, uh, was the benefit mm -hmm. and uh, the big force that brought me up to that, that career. When you were uh, at the very early stage of the career, um, can you please tell us uh, when did you earn your first one hundred dollars or euros? <laughs> well, actually, I, I started to work while I was student, so it was uh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> before uh, uh, I joined uh, these companies. Otherwise, my uh, career is split uh, into ten years in the non mm -hmm. and up to now almost eight years in Coke. So it's a uh, very focused. Uh, I'm uh, quite a loyal. Uh, Mm -hmm. employee of a company. I really work for a company that I love. Otherwise, before that I earned, um, while I was a student, I was working um, as a uh, waitress and barman. So this is where I earned my first money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what was your drive? What make, made you tick? What made you move up, move up when you were, uh, I know, in high school or in uh, faculty? Um, for me, I have a lot of energy and I like to do something that is interesting. This is always was always the most important thing for me, was the motivation and if I like my job, I like what to do or not. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't uh, change my job uh, for money, for instance. Uh, and it is one of the things that are my principles, not necessarily probably the best one, but this is how I see the things. Uh, I don't do the moves um, for uh, the salary or for the benefits or for uh, in none of these decisions this was the primary factor. Of course it is a factor uh, but it was never a primary factor. I go for an opportunity if I really like and I want to do that uh, and that's one of uh, my principles as well. Okay, if you uh, give some advices to a young person that right now it's at the beginning of the career, what would be, let's say, three advices that worked in your case? Well, first advice would be you need to know what do you want. So this is the first. Uh, if you don't know, it's not a big drama because this is coming and what you want may change during the years. But at least you need to have an idea what do you want. And then you need to be open and take risk in order to do it. Um, and uh, you need to believe that this can happen. Uh, I know that uh, a lot of people start with the mindset that I'm not good enough, I'm not educated enough, um, I'm not, uh, I don't know, capable enough, and so on. This uh, is a wrong start. Because if you, you need to be self-aware, of course, uh, but if you really want something to happen, you need to believe that this might happen. The belief is very important. Facts are facts, but you need to have the belief and the faith uh, that this uh, can happen and at least try it. If it doesn't, then you need to try again. I think that this is very important and in my case it proved to be true because my education by no means supports what I do, at least the initial one. After that, of course, I educated myself a lot throughout the, the career, but initial education was not signaling that I'm going to end up where I am. And it is not the most important thing. Uh, but I believe that if I want something and I really have the capabilities to change myself, to learn fast and so on, I can do it. Mm -hmm. There is nothing that is really impossible to do if, we, if you put the energy and the, and the forces behind. This is uh, the most important uh, thing, I believe. Super. Can you please tell us, uh, do you read? I do. I love books a lot. Okay. Tell us what type of books. Uh, so I have two types of books uh, that I read mostly. Um, I read a lot of for relaxation because this is uh, this is relaxing me really before going to sleep or so. I I like a lot science fiction. Um, Kenneth Clark, you know the old ones, the new ones. I like a lot of science fiction type of mm -hmm. book. Uh, one of my favorite books would be. Um, 
the guide of the galactic hitchhiker, I think, mm-hmm. should be the English translation yes. of, the, of the book. Very nice book, I really like it. Um, I also like a lot, um, like um, Agatha Christie or Conan Doyle type of mm-hmm. books, uh, classic uh, criminale type of books, uh, for, uh, for relaxation, this type of areas. Um, now, I also write like professional books, but at that stage I, I read these books that are more of um, self, self-learning self books, like um, we have a guy in the company that is a co-author, Jerry Wilson, that is a co-author of a book uh, which is uh, called um, Managing Brand You, which was a very interesting insight for me that we are marketeers are generally very good in making brands, but different brands, the company brands. But some, you also need to make a brand of yourself if you want to Correct. progress in your career. Exactly. And it is a very similar principle. So you need, to, you need to understand what is your unique selling proposition <laughs> versus the others and be able to display it and say it uh, to the audience when you, when you are on interview uh, so that people get your brand. What mm-hmm. are you standing for? What are your values? Uh, and display this behavior which makes your value values uh, and this is actually in my when I recruit for instance I look for behaviors much more than education and and uh, knowledge because education and knowledge I can teach people but I cannot change their personality or their behavior this is much more important yeah, it's the same in my case when I hiring somebody I'm looking for serious and good person not good and serious because <laughs> yeah, they can uh, learn but seriousness is very important is the the personality and the behavior of the person Um, and um, also I have another principle when I recruit I'm always looking for people that are smarter than me (laughs) (laughs) and I very often look for people that are different than me because I believe in a team you need to have different personalities diversity so that it is a rich team and also people that are able to evolve and that are able uh, to learn fast, which means they're smart. In your uh, evolution, uh, it was at some point a moment uh, where the ethic played an important role, where you, I know, chose the hard way versus the easy way. Or... Yeah, ethic is extremely important. Uh, I have never compromised on my ethics. I had a couple of uh, occasions where people were trying to, let's say, propose me things, because uh, especially when I got a bit higher, um, and uh, very, it's it's actually at one point of time, it's easy because when when you display your values that are completely against that, then our markets are small. This is known, so I never ever had more cases. Meaning that you know, again talking about the brand, I have a brand which means that you know ethics is there and this is untouchable. Um, and this is very important because this is part after that of your equity. And if you compromise even once, I believe, this is becoming also part of your equity and this is not changeable, then um, it's not easy. Now, doing what is right versus uh, what is easy, I had many cases where I needed to take this decision, not necessarily linked with the ethics though, but in different. In business, you need to take decisions all the time. I really uh, support my team. I think the team is uh, needs to be built because the succession planning, especially in big companies, succession is important. Uh, and uh, quite often being a manager in that level, you need to take a decision. Are you going to support your bosses or you support your team? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is uh, you know the easy way and a lot of people choose to go together with the bosses because this is the easier uh, I never choose that. If I believe that the right thing stays with the with the local, I was uh, fighting very much uh, with my bosses. Mm-hmm. If this is something that I believe is not right for the business locally or for the team locally, and uh, this is at the end of the day the right thing in the long term, because uh, my team is going to be successful. Therefore, the business is going to be successful, which at the end of the day is the most important. Uh, in my evaluation and not if I pleased somebody or didn't please uh, somebody. So from that point of view, I'm not very politically correct <laughs> employee or person, but somehow this is recognized and this is a 
smaller problem if the company is good enough as cookies versus not doing the right uh, thing for the business. So this is uh, only one example, but there are many, and um, there are many things that um, okay. I can give. And the closing sentence is a message, an inspirational message is for the people that are watching this video. Well, um, I don't have a, a motto or something, or uh, maybe if I have uh, for a decision making, it's also um, somebody that I really respected, that was my manager at one point of time. He actually had this motto and I, I realized it fits me very well, which is that um, um, if you're a manager, me as a manager, I prefer to be fired for a wrong decision rather than be fired for no decision. Avienia, thank you very much. Welcome.